Hey guys, so I thought I would do a new uh, helmets to my collection video. It's been well over a year since the last time I've done one of these videos. And uh, you know, I used to pick up helmets like all the time. Like I would just get several helmets at once or within a short period of time. Uh, but really, honestly, this year I've just picked up maybe one here or one there. And uh, really, I've just been kind of adding them in with my new additions videos. Uh, but I do have four helmets and two liners that I've picked up uh, within about the last month or so. Uh, and so I thought I'd go ahead and just make a, a, a dedicated, designated video for, you know, the new helmets and liners and everything. Uh, like I said, I just don't see the, don't pick them up, you know, like I used to. Um, getting somewhat, I guess, harder to find, at least the World War II stuff. Um, but, you know, I will pick up stuff, you know, here or there or on eBay or something, but... Anyways, um, I got some pretty interesting uh, things to share with you right here as far as these helmets. And um, let's go. Alright, so here's what I've got. Like I said, I got four helmets here on this back row. And these two on the front are liners. Um, I've got three World War II um, U.S. helmets. And then I've got, you know, this uh, German World War II era um helmet there on the end as far as the liners one of them is you know vietnam era and the other one is world war ii and so i'll go ahead and start right here now uh, one thing i want to say as far as these two helmets here both of them have been refinished um this first one here i picked up from a man i actually got um i'm sorry actually this one i just got this week off of ebay and i paid 39 dollars for it and honestly that's a little bit more than i would normally pay just for a helmet shell that's been you know, redone, and, uh, you know, the seller was honest, and they believed it was probably done by a reenactor. You can see, you see that paint there is not really, really old. It might be, you know, aged, and it has been redone and everything, but uh, it's a front seam, and it's a Schluter. It's a swivel bell. Now, what really wanted me to get this helmet is I try to look for unique or odd or, you know, different things, and so what really stood out to me in the pictures on the listing about this helmet is uh, it's a Schluter so you got the S right there but I noticed now some paint removal had already been done I know you know it's an ongoing thing but some people don't like that but um, it is what it is it's what I wanted to do and I mean if it's your item you can do what you want to with it but anyways so you can't really see it there that well but it's 239A 239A this helmet would date to, you know, early part of 1944. And so what's, okay, most people are like, okay, that's, that's interesting. So what's the big deal, right? So check this out. It's actually stamped again. 239A. And there's the S right here by the, the bail. So this helmet is actually marked twice. Now, I mean, I have seen helmets that are marked twice, but it wasn't a very common thing. But, I mean, it could, you know, it could happen from time to time, but, so you got one in the normal location, and then one over here also. And then there's the S for Schluter, and there's the S there, so that was really cool, it's something oddball, and, you know, I wish it hadn't been refinished, but it's still a really cool, cool, uh, I guess, oddity, or, you know, a random thing to have in the collection, so I wasn't, wasn't too, uh, hurt to pay, you know, that for it. $39, that's shipping and everything. Right here, now I got this helmet and the German helmet from the same man. Uh, he answered a post about looking for military stuff. Now this helmet here actually came with this Vietnam era liner. This helmet here, um, the man said that his brother uh, had passed away, but he was all about, you know, collecting military stuff. And he actually liked to restore and refinish things and everything. So I'm pretty sure his brother would have done this. Didn't do too bad of a job, but you know, I like original stuff, original finish and everything. Um, this one, it's got the the chin strap set up, you know, here from the 70s, around 1974, I believe, is when they started doing these. Um, I did do a paint removal here, and it's 9-0, and you can't read the last, the third letter, and then it's an A. So, uh, this helmet, you know, also date to 1944. I forgot the month off the top of my head, but around early to mid 1944 on this um it came with this liner here which is pretty complete it's actually a really nice liner and uh it's a 
pretty sure it was it? it's a firestone yeah firestone liner like i said pretty complete overall in good shape so it's a nice liner i got this helmet set up for uh 30 dollars the helmet and the liner but like again i wish it hadn't been refinished but it's still a still a nice helmet moving on here uh i'll actually skip that when it come back so i got this from the man also uh this is uh, an m35 basically but i think it's also known as an m40 i'm not as good with the german stuff uh, I made a German collection video, and I forgot what, what I said this helmet was. I know it's at least an M35, but uh, no markings, no name, um, no liner. The only thing it actually does have is, you know, the Q64 on there. But So it's missing most of everything it needs, and I believe, I wanted, to me, it looked like it had been sanded down, like all the original paint was removed. A few people commented and thought, I guess, maybe it was how it's, it should be, or maybe it's not been sanded down or smoothed down but it just looks looks doesn't look painted it looks like it's down to the bare metal to me so not a lot just a whole lot of value there but i gave 30 dollars for that one also so you know the guy was more than happy you know uh, with that now uh, i'll come back to this helmet here this helmet is so awesome i went on a road trip a couple weekends ago and I went to a huge antique warehouse. It was awesome. Two floors, you know, two levels. It's like an old mill, or not old mill, some old factory of some kind. But anyways, this helmet was in a booth. And let me just say, do any of you guys have the problem with whenever you go to a store or a sale or whatever, it seems like the one item out of everything that I want is the one item that doesn't have a price tag on it. Does any Do any of y'all have that problem or is it just me? I'm like the one item out of a hundred things in the booth and it just didn't have a price on it. So I took this up to the front desk and they were contacted, you know, the booth owner and see what he wanted. And uh, I got this helmet here, tax and everything it was $26. It's really, really awesome. It's a World War II um, rear seam. This one is a Schluter also. There's the S and it's 521A. You know, and for those of you who don't know, Schluter never hit the 600 mark with their heat stamps. McCord hit right at 1300 by the end of the war. Schluter didn't even hit 600. The highest one I think I've seen is like 584 or 586 or something like that. So this is 521. So this helmet here would date, you know, the Schluter don't have a, a, a more better chart as far as dating like the McCord does in the book. But, you know, some collectors um put a, some listing together and i actually shared it on some facebook groups and it really blew up maybe a couple years ago anyway so this dates to you know somewhere around may or maybe june ish 1945 so late war um it's actually got a laundry number it's w1124 uh, it's got the name john ed kathy or yeah kathy in there um what's really really cool is it's marked on the front there's a LT, surely a lieutenant, the T's kind of faded, but it's LT Pace, P-A-C-E, and then it's got the mark there for lieutenant. Now, being late war, more than likely, those markings are probably from the Korean War, more than likely. Um, but it's got original finish. It does have a knock on the top there, but original finish, I really, really like that a lot. It's a nice helmet for $26. I was very pleased to get that lastly on that same road trip stopped in an anti another antique store and uh, this world war ii liner was ten dollars and i know it's rough the sweatband is dry rotted you know the leather i did uh, disconnect this from the nape um because you know it could end up tearing the back part of the nape here and everything support but um it cleaned up a little bit and uh honestly just need like the drawstring here to pull this back together a new sweatband and this has potential but um, still a really nice liner overall. It's a Westinghouse uh, kind of mid-war liner. But anyways, 10 bucks couldn't pass that up. But anyways, guys, as always, thank you so much for watching. You guys know I love helmets, and I believe I'm at, I think I have 113, if I'm not mistaken. I believe I've got 113 helmets, and over the years, you know, I've sold some and traded some. But I've only gotten rid of one World War II helmet. Some of you guys reach out to me on, in, you know, in comments or even on Instagram. Will you sell any World War II helmets? And honestly, I don't. Uh, one of them had been redone by, you know, uh, and it, I ended up selling the thing. And, you know, I made a little bit of money on it. But I just don't sell my World War II helmets um, because I guess they're near and dear to my heart. But the ones I did sell and trade were like Vietnam era 
or even newer, you know, nothing, um, nothing like I normally collect or want to hang on to. But if I had every helmet that I'd ever owned, I believe I would have like 148, 147. I would be almost at 150 helmets. So, you know, I just love these things. Um, if you get a chance, I made a video called uh, The Many Uses of a Helmet. Uh, I made it uh, actually almost two years ago now. And, uh, you know, it's kind of humorous and kind of shows you some different uses that the soldiers used for helmets and everything. And I hope you guys will watch that and like that video. But anyways, guys, thank you for all the support. More videos are on the way.